or you change your ideas, or you change your beliefs, or you change your understanding, but you don't change your brain. It's a very weird concept to most people. So then the question I have is, what actually do we change in our brain? Do we grow new neurons or kill neurons whenever you learn something? Or maybe the neurons that are there, you grow more axons, or maybe they grow more dendrites. Or maybe you don't grow dendrites, but you make new synapses in the dendrites that you already have. Or maybe you don't make new synapses, but you change the ones that are there. So which of these do you think is the most important mechanism for learning that we have? Yes, you can talk to each other. You have a minute. So you know that initially people thought that all your, your 
language has interesting vestiges of this. So you guys, when you memorize something, you learn it by heart, which is really weird. As a foreigner, when somebody told me that's how you memorize stuff, I'm like, what? <laughs> Thank you. 
the animals nowadays, in the United States. And you do this over and over, and after a few times, the animal learns that the bell predicts the stick. So he now salivates to the bell. You would do the same thing. You have done this with humans. We condition incredibly easily. So the idea was that the animal associated the bell with the stick. So now the bell acquired predictive value. So that's a form of associated learning. Another very classical example of associative learning is what's called operant conditioning. In operant conditioning is when you train someone or you... So the classic example of operant conditioning, have you guys heard of operant conditioning? What is it? Changing the frequency of reactions to something, giving um, rewards or punishments. What are you associating? Are you associating to stimuli? You're usually associating an action with an outcome. So, for example, if I step here and suddenly get an electric shock, I probably will step back. <laughs> And I will kind of consider that I probably should not step there again. But if I do and I get an electric shock, that's the end of it. I'm not going to step there for the rest of my life. So I have associated an action with an outcome. It could be a positive or negative outcome. Not associative learning. This usually just means you change the response to a stimulus, but not because it's become associated with anything specific. And there's two forms of non-associative learning that we'll talk about. One is habituation and the other one is sensitization. Habituation can be defined as the, you reduce your response to a stimulus that is presented many times and is not actually harmful. So you can think of if somebody, maybe if like somebody's poking at you, you know, the first time it may surprise you, but then they keep poking at you and you just kind of like, you don't even respond anymore. It's not a harmful stimuli, it may be annoying, but it's not harmful. Now, if somebody was stabbing you several times, <laughs> you wouldn't have to to that. It is the same motion, maybe it's going to be exactly the same place, but at that point, it is actually harmful. So your nervous system reacts differently. So habituation is the change in behavior, usually involving a, re a reduction in your response to a stimulus that's presented many, many times that is not actually harmful. In the case of aplesia, if you keep putting water on the siphon, it will respond less and less. <coughs> Sensitization is when something happens and suddenly your whole body goes to kind of like a state of arousal. So your response to anything becomes increased. And I'll give you an example of both of these things. So in aplesia, if you play a quick shove on the siphon or water, GWR is a real withdrawal <coughs> reflex, and this is how much, so initially you put, put water or give a little shove and the deal we do it dramatically. <coughs> then if you now do it several times, you'll see that after many, many repetitions, you now get a much smaller response. You only get 50% of the response. And Habituation is a short lasting learning, so if you wait 30 minutes and do it again, you'll get a very big response and it will habituate. You're done that way. We habituate and we disabituate very quickly. Is the concept of habituation clear? Like, the, you get the same stimulus, but the response of the animal is different. And that is kind of the definition of learning. Yes? So, I mean, this is a, that's, depending on what, how you're thinking about it, if, if it's just that the shower is a little bit hot and then you kind of like feel comfortable, <coughs> then yes. But you can also have a different thing, which is like desensitization, which is when your stimulus, when your receptors stop responding to the stimulus at all. Habituation is not a change in the receptor level. It's a change at the level of the nervous system. So your sensation at the level of the receptor is still exactly the same. But that actually is something we know today, we didn't know before our vision. So people put it as a question. Uh, I'm given the same stimulus. Why is the response different? Because
because really, as I said, there's many definitions of learning, but by far that is the simplest one. To look at that, people decided to look at individual neurons inside of a patient, you see here the other ladies, etc. You have to memorize this and be able to draw it in an exam. It's an educated 